If you were using a computer anytime before the dawn of USB in the Pentium and Pentium 2 era, connecting pretty much anything to your computer required any one of a large variety of ports. Keyboards used to connect via a 5-pin DIN connector and mice utilized the serial port. Later, both moved to the PS2 connector introduced by IBM in 1987. The LPT port was a parallel port mainly used by printers. Then there was the game port for joysticks and gamepads. Most will remember that those ports were part of sound or ISA IDE IO cards. There was another serial port called Firewire, which was mainly used by digital video and audio devices like camcorders and digital cameras. Today, those connectors are obsolete and have been replaced by USB. However, you should choose wisely what devices you connect to your retro PC, as we will see in today's video. About a year ago, I observed an unusual behavior while benchmarking an AMD K62 Plus CPU. In Speedsys, the cache benchmark revealed an abnormal looking graph, displaying erratic fluctuations throughout the test. Puzzled by the results, I started to look for an explanation. I have performed the Speedsys benchmark many times before, and I have never seen such results. At some point, I believed the root cause to be the CPU which is a modified AMD K6 2 Plus with double the level 2 cache effectively turning it into an AMD K6 3 Plus. You may be as surprised as I was back then when I realized that this behavior was caused by my mouse and keyboard connected via USB. To understand why input devices may cost you a few percent in performance, we have to understand a bit more about the USB protocol. The USB protocol implements four different types of data transfers. First, there are control transfers, which are small in size and are generally used to configure the device whenever it is connected to the host. Control transfers are usually present in every single USB device. Then there are bulk transfers, which are used to transfer large amounts of data. They are common for devices that need to transfer a large amount of data that must get through with no data loss. Bulk transfers are used by printers, storage and network devices. The third type of transfers are isochronous transfers, which are used for real-time data transfer like streaming audio or video. Data is not guaranteed to make it through. And finally, there are interrupt transfers, which are used for devices that need periodic, low-latency communication. It is the primary transport method for USB keyboards and mice. In the comment section of my previous video, many of you mentioned the polling mechanism to be the reason for the 2-4% performance loss observed in my tests. And you were all correct. Today, we look a bit closer into the issue by testing different AMD and Intel CPUs. Which CPUs are affected more? When do we no longer see a significant performance drop? And if this issue is also present in Windows? Speedsys gives a nice visual representation when a USB device is plugged into the host. But there are also a lot of other tests that do show a slight performance drop when a USB input device is present. I do not want to overwhelm you with dozens of graphs. Instead, I will just give you a summary of the performance drop you can expect for each CPU. I tested all CPUs using Doom, PC Player, Quake, Speedsys, Norton System Information and Topbench. And without further delay, let's start with a Pentium 75 installed in the ASUS P55T2P4 motherboard. This CPU may be a bit interesting because I do believe this to be the mobile version capable to run at 2.9 volts. This Pentium 75 derives its frequency from a 50 MHz system bus and a multiplier of 1.5. On average, the Pentium 75 lost about 1.6% in performance with a USB input device connected. In Speedsys, we can see the behavior of the different cache levels. The Pentium 75 has 16 KB of level 1 cache. 8 kilobytes are dedicated for instructions and another 8 are used to store data. The 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache are located on the motherboard and operate at the system bus clock of 50 MHz. The Pentium 75 may be a bit slow, but we do see small bumps appear for the level 1 and the level 2 caches. What is interesting though is that only the moving operation seems to be affected. There are two bumps during the level 1 cache test and multiple irregular bumps when Speedsys tests the level 2 cache. Next up is a Pentium 200. The system bus is now elevated to 66 MHz. This CPU does not yet support the MMX instruction set. 
On average, this CPU loses about 1.1% in performance when a USB input device is connected. This CPU, which is clocked over 2.5 times higher than the Pentium 75, seems to be less affected by the USB shenanigans. The graph in Speedsys looks a bit different this time. Once more, only the moving operation is affected. But this time, we see a lot more equally distributed bumps during the level 1 cache test. The level 1 cache is clearly affected by an attached USB input device. Surprisingly, no effects are noticeable during the level 2 cache test. As with the Pentium 75, the cache is located on the motherboard. The only difference is that now it operates at the bus frequency of 66 MHz. I also tested this CPU using the cache checking tool Cache Check. Here you can see that there are delays when accessing the cache when a USB input device is connected. Without such a device, you get smooth cache performance reported by Cache Check. Speedsys and Cache Check seem to be very good tools to uncover the USB issue. But let's move on to the next CPU. We are transitioning from socket 7 to slot 1 with a Pentium 2 333 processor. The system bus remains at a clock speed of 66 MHz. There is a notable change in the design compared to its predecessor. The level 2 cache has been relocated from the motherboard to the processor's cartridge. Furthermore, the off-dial level 2 cache operates at half the CPU frequency. In the case of this CPU, at 166 MHz. The Pentium 2 has access to 512 KB of level 2 cache. Additionally, the level 1 cache received an upgrade in size, now totaling 32 KB in capacity, 16 KB dedicated to instructions and another 16 for data. To my surprise, the Pentium 2 was affected quite a bit when a USB input device was connected to one of the USB ports of this Gigabyte GA6BXC motherboard. The performance dropped by 2.3% the most I have measured so far. There is a lot of information available in the Speedsys graph. First, the level 1 cache is affected during move as well as write operations. The level 2 cache does not seem to be affected. However, when looking at the MMX cache tests, we can see that the read and write operations are affected while testing the level 1 cache. The read operation, which is the brown line, continues to be affected during the level 2 cache test. Those test results do affirm the performance drop I have measured during the other tests. Unfortunately, the Pentium 2 seems to suffer the most when a USB input device is connected. Let's move on to the next generation and the final Intel CPU in today's test, a Pentium 3 with 1000 MHz for the socket 370. The motherboard I have used for this CPU is the ASUS P3BF. The cache structure was revised once more and the level 2 cache is now part of the CPU die operating at the frequency of the core, in this case at 1000 MHz. Furthermore, the system bus operates at 133 MHz. With this CPU, I no longer noticed a difference in performance when a USB input device is plugged into one of the USB ports. In Speedsys, I can no longer detect a significant difference between both graphs. The USB input device no longer negatively affects the performance of the system. The CPU and the platform are no longer affected by a USB input device. Cache check reveals that the cache no longer exhibits an increased and erratic access time. The Pentium 2 333 is the CPU that is affected the most when a USB input device is connected. A Pentium 3 1000 and probably a few models below are no longer affected by a USB input device. I'm afraid you should be using serial, PS2 and old DIN keyboards and mice if you're looking to get the most performance from your retro PC. But let's move on now to a few AMD CPUs. We start with the Pentium 200 counterpart, the AMD K6 with 200 MHz. This CPU has an impressive level 1 cache of 64 kilobytes, 32 kilobytes for instructions and 32 for data. To remind us, the original Pentium had only 16 KB in total. The motherboard is configured almost identical to the Pentium 200, just the voltage can be lowered from 3.3 to 2.9 volts for the AMD CPU. For all AMD CPUs, I replaced the ASUS P55T2P4 with a DFI K6 PV3 Plus motherboard, which allows to set lower voltages. It also has 1 MB onboard level 2 cache. When a USB input device is plugged into the system, the AMD CPU experiences a 2% reduction in performance. 
This is worse than the Pentium 200, and I wonder if this is due to the larger level 1 cache. But let's analyze the speedsys graphs. The level 1 cache is affected in every operation except during the MMX moving operation. The large level 2 cache seems to be affected during writing and moving when getting closer to the end of the test. Furthermore, the MMX reading operation is affected for both cache levels. Having that many operations affected seems to validate the large performance drop I have measured before. The next CPU for the SuperSocket 7 platform is the K62450, clocked at 400MHz. The size of the level 1 cache is similar to the K6, 32KB instruction and 32KB of data cache for a total of 64KB. With a USB input device connected, the performance drops by 1.7% which is less compared to the K6 CPU. Speedsys reports that the level 1 cache is affected during all operations. The level 2 cache however, which is located on the motherboard, is not affected by the USB input device. It is very interesting to see how all those CPUs are affected differently by the USB device. But so far, the performance drops do make sense when we see what is happening to the cache. The final CPU for today is the K6 2 Plus. With a twist. This CPU was modified to unlock the additional 128KB of level 2 cache, which has been deactivated by AMD, effectively turning it into an AMD K6 3 Plus. The CPU is clocked at 550MHz and once more has 64KB of level 1 cache. The 256KB of level 2 cache are new and on the die operating at the CPU core frequency. The 1 MB cache on the motherboard simply moves one level down and becomes a level 3 cache. When a USB input device is connected, the CPU loses about 1.5% of its performance on average. And again, this CPU behaves differently to the others when we have a look at the speedsys graphs. This is the only CPU from all the ones we have tested today where all operations and both cache levels, level 1 and level 2 are affected by a plugged in USB input device. To be honest, I am surprised to not see a larger performance drop since literally all cache levels are affected. I think there is even a slight issue with the level 3 cache, which is the cache on the motherboard. My conclusion for AMD CPUs is the same as for Intel CPUs. If you can, avoid USB input devices. Before we wrap up, I want to briefly share how one of those CPUs performs on the Windows. The results deliver a clear message. With a USB input device connected, performance drops by a similar percentage in Windows compared to what we have seen under DOS. Unfortunately, speedsys cannot test the cache performance under Windows, but I would expect the graphs to look similar to what we have seen in DOS. If you can, avoid USB input devices on your retro PCs to avoid the performance drop of 1-3%. PS2, DIN5 and serial ports offer a protocol supporting real interrupts, a mechanism that is used to tell the CPU that the device requires attention. And of course, we can investigate even further. Moving from USB 1.0 to 2.0 for instance will increase the polling rate. But this may be something for a future video. If you made it till here then I thank you for your attention. We did reach the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, you would really help me out if you give this video a like. Also consider subscribing to my channel to get notified whenever I upload new content. And finally a big thank you to all my Patreons. Your invaluable support is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.